Well, good morning, ladies. It's good to, to see some of you all, and I know the rest of you all can hear me uh, on the conference call line, so thank you for calling in, tuning in, being here. Um, I, I really appreciate it, so looking forward to another, uh, another lesson with you all this morning. Um, before we, I tell you, let's, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll jump into our lesson, and um, hopefully everyone has the handout. I know, uh, Julia emailed it out, I think on Friday, and then I'm sure Denise has put it in our Facebook group, so um, we'll go ahead and pray, and then we'll get started with our lesson for today. Um, wow, God, how we thank you. God, just, just always want to start with saying thank you um, for who you are, for what you've done, God, in our lives, and so we just come this morning already uh, already having been in your presence, already having heard from you, God, and just experienced um, what we have thus far in our worship service. And so um, we just ask that you would uh, just continue to be with us during this time as we gather for our Sunday school. Ask God that you just uh, speak to us again through this lesson. Um, and as, as we always say, God, and even as Pastor said this morning, God, we want to leave here different. We want to leave here transformed, God. We don't want this to just be another thing that we do or that we check off the list on Sunday morning, God. So uh, allow this to be just that for us, God, to be to help transform us into the women that you would have us to be. I thank you and I praise you, God, again for this opportunity. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, if you have your handout, ladies, <clears throat> you will see that we are... Uh, talking about this morning, I'm uh, going to be talking about defeating distractions, um, defeating distractions. And so um, on your handout, it says, and I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. Um, Y'all know most of the time we have somebody in class read it, but since we're all spread out, uh, it might be a little difficult to hear. So uh, we'll, we may try it and see what happens. Um, but the, um, the intro says, the goal of the Christian's life is to live in such a way that our lives mirror that of Jesus Christ. This is a continual process since we are imperfect beings operating in our current fleshly bodies. Any number of things can alter our focus and hinder our pursuit of a life mirroring Jesus. It is our responsibility to develop the spiritual wherewithal to deal with and defeat those distractions. And so when we talk about the word distraction, when we look at that and what that really means, and it says here on your handout, a distraction is it really in simple terms is something that takes your attention away from whatever you're supposed to be doing. And I have here, it comes from, y'all know I like breaking words down. It comes from the Latin uh, word dis, which means apart and also trahir, which means drag. And so literally it's this idea of being dragged away from your task or being dragged away from what you're supposed to be doing. So a lot of times when we think about a distraction, we think about uh, things in a negative connotation or, or a negative thing that's pulling us away. So a sinful act, um, a toxic relationship, uh, our own pride, um, but there are some things that don't necessarily fall into that negative category that can still be a distraction for us if we allow them to pull us away from our primary pur purpose, which is to live a life, demonstrate a life that mirrors that of Jesus. And so that could be our job. In and of itself, the job is not good or bad. It's just a job. Um, but we can allow it to become a distraction for us. It could be our marriages, ladies. Um, God, is, God is pleased um, with marriage. He, he loves marriage, but we can allow that to pull us away from him. It could be school. Uh, it could be that hobby that we love. Uh, it could be hanging out with our girlfriends. It could, be, could even be our children. So these things, again, in and of themselves are not negative, but if we have them prioritized wrong, if we have them in the wrong order, they can indeed become a distraction for us in pursuing this life that's supposed to look like Jesus. 
And so the question then becomes, okay, so what do we do? What, what do we then do when these distractions come? Because some of them come, whether we, we like it or not, some of them come through no fault of our own. They just happen through the course of life. Some of them, as I said, are on us because we allow, we bring them in and then we allow them to pull us away. So the question then becomes, what do we do? Well, I'm so very glad you asked. <laughs> What we're going to do, we're going to look at several passages of scripture um, today. We're just going to just going to walk through the scriptures and talk about this. Um, and for those of you, again, this this already, we are not going to finish this handout today, y'all. This is going to be a two part lesson. We're going to finish it next week um, because there's scripture that we're just going to really walk through. But the first thing that we have to do when we talk about defeating distractions, when we talk about defeating those things, and we could list in, we could we could add to the list of the things that I just named out there. But if we're going to defeat them, the first thing we have to do, as it says on your handout, is cling to God's word. We have to cling to God's word. And so letter A says, we cling to God's word because it is our roadmap to sanctification. So why are we holding on to God's word? Aside from the obvious, we cling to it because it is God's word that is our roadmap to sanctification. Psalm 119, 105 says, I tell you what, I, we're going to try this and hopefully you all can hear us. If not, I'll repeat it. Monique, would you read uh, Psalm 119, 105 for me? Thank you for bearing with us, ladies. You got it. <laughs> Go ahead, Lena. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So Psalm 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And we, we hear that scripture a lot. We, a lot of us probably uh, can recite it. Now, once Lena started with the first couple of words, we probably finished what that passage says. And so God's word is, listen, ladies, it is the one thing. It is, it is actually the primary thing that we need to get from wherever we are to where it is he is trying to take us. And where he's trying to take us, again, is to the end of the road where when we show up, we look just like Jesus. And so what happens is when we have distractions that are vying for our attention and pulling us away from our course that God has set out for us, what happens is that we are pulled away from the light that his word gives that illuminates this path for us towards sanctification. And so that word, when we talk about sanctification, it literally means to be set apart. If our goal is for our life to look like Jesus, we have to be set apart. We, we cannot operate the way that the world operates. We cannot look the same way that the world looks because Jesus didn't look the way that the world looked. And so we can't do the same things that the world does. We can't respond the same way that the world responds to whatever comes into our orbit. We have to be set apart. And so it's God's word that gives us the instructions on how to do that. It's God's word that tells us which way we need to turn and how we need to dodge and where we need to go when those distractions come our way. And typically those distractions are talking to and feeding my flesh. So it's God's word that's going to give me what I need to know how to respond when that happens. Okay? So when, when I am not focused on God's word, what happens then is, and I'm going to keep saying this, it, it is literally I'm being pulled away. And when I am pulled away, I am in the danger zone. Because when I'm pulled away and I'm not paying attention to God's word, I'm not clinging to his word, and I'm not using it as my roadmap, when I get pulled off course, I can end up in, the, in a ditch on the side of the road and not know how to come out. Okay? So, so it's God's word that's going to keep me focused on how to respond if I'm on my job. Listen, ladies, if I'm on my job 
and I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, but I look around and the folk who doing everything that they shouldn't do are the ones that's getting a promotion. It's God's word that's going to help me respond to that, not in my fleshly self, but the way that he would have me to when his word tells me that everything I do, I should do as unto him and not worry about what everybody else is doing, okay? So it's God's word. It is his roadmap to me for this life of holiness and this life that's going to set me apart, all right? So the first thing we have to do when we cling to God's word is remember that it's God's word that is, uh, it is my roadmap. It is, we don't use them now. We use Siri and all these people on our phones for navigation. But back in the day, I do remember when there were literal paper maps that we opened up and you had to look at the road and you had to, you know, mark out the, get a piece of paper or a ruler and figure out what the distance was from point A to point B. But it was a literal map that you had to look at. Well, now we can just listen. We really don't have to look at where we're going. We can just say, Siri, uh, take me to Orange and just listen to what she says. I don't necessarily have to look at the roads that I'm gonna have to get on along the way, but God's word is my road. I've got to get into his word. I've got to see what his word says to me and which way I should go to get me to my end point of this life that mirrors Christ, okay? So we look at letter B on our handout. It says, God's word is the standard of truth. God's word, we cling to his word because it is the standard of truth. So one of the ways that we can become distracted from our goal of looking like Jesus is when we accept or when we even start to believe or question the idea of truth. And Pastor kind of mentioned it a little bit this morning. We, we are... We're living in, in an era where truth, truth is relative. It's, it's, it's kind of, you know, whatever this person says, whatever this person thinks, it, it seems like there's, there's no absolute truth, okay? Everybody has their own idea of what the truth is or what their own version of what the truth is going to be. But the problem is that many, most, almost none of those ideas have anything to do with the word of God. They are not attached to God's word. And so if we're not careful, we can get sucked into that vortex and begin to question or even dismiss what God's word has to say to us about any given situation that we find ourselves in. But here's what, here's what the Bible says about God's word. Look at Psalm 119 verse 142. Psalm 119 verse 142 says this, your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Listen, and your law is truth, okay? Psalm 119, verse 151. You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth, okay? Still in Psalm 119, when you get a chance, just read the whole, that whole chapter of Psalm. It'll bless your life. Psalm 119, verse 160. Listen what it says, y'all. The entirety, the entirety of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. So God's word is saying to us about itself. God is saying it is his word that is the truth. So whatever you are listening to, if it does not line up with the word of God, it ain't true. Okay? John 17, just one more, John 17, verse 17. Um, this, this is a section in John where, where Jesus is praying um, he's for his disciples. And, and just before that, he has just finished praying for himself. And in the section after that, he's going to be praying for all believers. But he's praying for specifically for his disciples in this section. But right here, what happens is he, he, he ties into what he had just taught, what we just talked about in letter A, where he says, sanctify them by your truth. Jesus said, your word is truth. Jesus is asking God as he is praying, he is asking God to sanctify, set apart his disciples to, to do it and to do it by his truth, which is his word. 
So again, Jesus, it, Jesus is declaring right here that truth is communicated through the word of God. The word of God is the truth, okay? And so when, when we are striving to look like Christ, when we are striving for our lives to mirror that of Christ, when we, we are looking to him as our example, what we have to keep in mind is that God's word is where we have to hang our hat <laughs> because, because the world will, will begin to tell us lies. And if we do not filter that through God's word, we will fall for those lies. And when we find ourselves dealing with distractions, if we're not basing it on God's word, we will be pulled further and further away from what it is that he would have us to do. So when we are watching the media, when we are listening to, whether it's media, whether it's social media, if we're watching CNN, NBC, MSNBC, Fox, it doesn't matter who it is, when we're listening to our government authorities, whether it's the mayor, Sylvester Turner, whether it's Judge Hidalgo, whether it is our president, whoever it is, we have, we have all of these folks in our ear all day, every day, all this stuff that we're being inundated with, and a lot of times it's half-truths or it's outright lies. <laughs> So we have got to cling to God's word because it is the truth. It is the standard for truth. If it does not fit what God's word says, it is not truth. So we cling to God's word because that is our standard for truth. Listen, ladies, when we talk about distraction, we are dealing with, and I, I didn't say anything about um, corona being a distraction right now because it's a given that it is but when we listen to everything that we're hearing even about the coronavirus even about COVID-19 we have got to be careful ladies that we don't allow the distraction and I'm not I don't mean it says that it's not real oh it's very real but we cannot allow that to become such a distraction in our life that we forget to pray we cannot allow it to become such a distraction in our life that we are getting into conversations on social media with folks because they believe one thing and we believe something else. And so now we are responding on social media in a way that has nothing to do that does not demonstrate in any way, in any form, a life that is supposed to look like Jesus. We've got to be careful that we don't allow it to distract us in such a way that other folk who see us comment on social media, who know that we say we're believers, but what we're typing on social media doesn't match what we say, and so now we have messed somebody up. That is not a life that mirrors Christ. Again, God's word is our standard for truth, okay? So we cling to his word. Again, because it's our roadmap to sanctification, we cling to his word because it is, his, it is this, our standard for truth, and we also cling to God's word because it is the source of our strength. Let us see. Again, I'm standing once in Psalm 119. I told y'all, just read it when you have some time. Read it this evening if you have some time. So here, here is the deal. Um, when... There are times when, 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 we, when we are dealing with distractions and they will, um, they will pull us, but they will seem like, feel like, cause us to feel like it is literally sucking the life out of us, okay? And so if we try to live this life and operate in our own strength, we're going to fail every time. If I try to walk this road of looking like and, and, and looking to Jesus' example and being an example to others because I'm trying to, to exemplify him. If I try to do that in and of Catherine's own strength, I'm going to fall every single time. But I cannot do it in and of myself. I have to rely on something else to help me, and that something else is God's word because that is where I find my strength 
when I'm being pulled away, when I'm being pulled apart, when very real things are happening in my life and I want to look at that. I want to look at the fact that I don't have a job. I want to look at the fact that there's no money in the account. I want to look at the fact that somebody is sick. I want to look at the fact that somebody has died. I want to look at the fact that I don't know whether the kids are going to go to school or they're going to stay home. And I don't know what to do with them if they do stay home. I want, I want to look at all of that. But if I'm going to not allow that to distract me, it's got to be God's word that pulls me back in. Okay? So... So we cling to his word because he is our source of strength, all right? And when we do that, there's absolutely nothing that we can't do because God cannot fail and God cannot lie. He is able and capable of doing everything. So if I hold on to him then, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to have the strength that I need to do whatever it is that he has told me to do. So Psalm 19 I'm sorry, Psalm 119, verse 28. Listen to what it says, y'all. It says, my soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. This, the message version reads it like this. The message Bible says this. My sad life's dilapidated. Listen to those words, y'all. My sad life is dilapidated, a falling down barn. But here it is, build me up again by your word. So when the psalmist uses that word heaviness right there, what he's really, he's referring to is grief. And what he's saying is that I am so beat down by this thing, I am so beat down by my grief, that the only strength that I have has got to come from God's word. If I'm going to come up out of this, it's got to be because of God's word. And I don't know about any of you, but I'm, on, but I'm just going to tell the, the true truth. There have been times in this life when my heart has felt like, in addition to coming out of my chest, that it was crushed just with pain and grief and sorrow and hurt and despair. There have been times when I have felt like there, there is absolutely no possible way. So when the message version said, my sad life is dilapidated, there have been times when I've felt that way. Notice I said, I felt that way. But what I had to come to understand is that every time I felt that way, I have to run to God's word to regain my strength because it is God's strength that is going to bring me up out of that, just like the psalmist is saying, build me up again with your word. And so the reality is pain can be a distraction. <laughs> pain, pain can make you think that everything is over. And so because you think everything is over, you then begin to behave like everything is over, and your life looks nothing like that of a Christian, a Christ follower, one who's supposed to look like Jesus because I feel like it's all falling apart. So now I'm just going to act like it's falling apart. So that pain now is acting as a distraction, pulling me away from what I'm supposed to be doing. But what I'm saying to you is that you've got to cling to God's word because it's God's word that is your strength. I am certain that I'm not the only one. You have to hold on to his word. And when I say hold, hold on for dear life sometimes. But when you do, God is going to strengthen you. He is going to give you what you need to get up and keep going and keep doing what he's called for you to do. Look at Isaiah 40 and verse 8. Again, another passage of scripture that we, we hear all the time, we quote it all the time. It says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Here's why this is so important. This, this is the very assurance that God's word is my strength. Because what it's saying is when everything else has fallen away, has faded away, has gone away, it is God's word that's still going to be right there. Yeah. So I can hold on to what I know is going to still be there in the end. When everything else is gone, God's word is going to be there. Therefore, 
I can cling to it for my strength. Okay? All right, ladies. Y'all good? Any Ladies who are here, any questions? Y'all good, ladies? All right. So moving on. Moving on. Um, Roman number two. So after... Not only do we have to cling to God's word, we also have to listen <laughs> to God's voice. And we have to listen intently to God's voice. Listen, Linda. Listen. Okay? Y'all know that y'all y'all seen that little boy. Listen, Linda, listen. That's what we have to do. Listen, Monique, listen. Listen, Ethel, listen. Listen, Lena, listen. Listen, Catherine. Okay. Letter A says, we listen, here's why we have to listen. We listen to receive guidance and direction, okay? Um, look at Jeremiah uh, 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. So here's, here's, here's what can happen. When, when we get pulled off track, by these distractions, all these things that are coming at us. And like I said, some stuff that we put in the middle of the road um, as a distraction for ourselves. When, when that happens, we got we to gotta be willing to listen to God's voice. We have to be willing to listen because it is God, it is his voice, it is his Holy Spirit that is going to speak to us and give me guidance and direction that I need. Jeremiah says in verse in chapter 33 verse 3 it says call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things this is God speaking to Jeremiah so what's happening here is that God is speaking to Jeremiah here because Jeremiah is struggling to understand how God is going to restore the nation of Israel that in Jeremiah's eyes is just doomed okay at this time that Jeremiah is writing this, he is actually in prison, okay? So what's happening is he can't understand how there is going to be any future for Israel. He's distracted by his current situation. He is focused on his current situation and everything that's going on that he's not able to see how it is possible that God is going to restore the nation of Israel. He just can't make sense of it because what it looks like right now to him. But this is what God says to him, and this is what's so cool about God's word and how God will speak to us, but we got to listen. But God says to him, call to me. He says, I'm, I'm going to answer you. Not only am I going to answer you, he says, but I'm going to show you the stuff that you don't understand. I'm going to give you the guidance and the direction that you need about the stuff that you can't make sense of right now. And I know you can't because I hadn't told you, and it's some stuff that you just don't know, need to know right now. But if I've told you that it's going to happen, just believe that it's going to happen. But the second piece of that, you got to listen to me. You have to listen to what I'm saying. So, and I, again, I'm, I'm sure some of us have been there in a spot where you just feel like it's just, it's just absolutely crazy, like all the way around, and, and there's no possible way that God is going to turn that thing around and make it make sense. But just like Jeremiah, who was in prison when, when, when this went down, he was in prison, and he's trying to make sense of it. But God says, I'm telling you, I, call to me. First of all, call to me. I'm telling you I'm going to answer you, and I'm going to show you great and mighty things which, here, which you do not know. But here's the, the deal. In order for you to know the stuff you don't know, you got to listen to what God is saying. You have to listen to what God says. And so it, it's in those times that we've got to quiet ourselves. we got to get somewhere and be quiet. we got to hush. we got to turn off the radio. we got to turn off the TV. we got to turn off the cell phone. we got like, turn it off. Not on vibrate but off, because when it's on vibrate, you can still hear it kind of moving if you have it on the desk. I mean, turn it completely off and, and turn everything off so that you can hear what God is saying to you so he can give you the guidance and the direction you need to do what he's told you to do. But you got to listen. You have to be in a position to listen, and you got to stop talking. After you call to him, then you got to hush up and listen. 
to what he says. And then after you listen to what he says, then you got to do what he's told you to do. Listen, Psalm 32, verse 8 and 9. He says, I will instruct you. Listen, y'all. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Here's the key. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with a bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. God is making it very, very clear here to us ladies. He's saying, I'm, I'm going to teach you which way to go. I'm going I'm I'm to give you the direction and the guidance that you need. I'm going to show you where to go in this thing. But the warning that's attached to it in verse 9 is, is very clear. It says, do not be like the horse or like the mule. In other words, don't, don't be like an untamed horse and a stubborn mule doing what you want to do. You got to listen to what I'm telling you because I'm telling I'm going to tell you which way to go. I'm going to guide you. You can't come to me and then I tell you what to do and then you decide to do something different. That's not how this works. We have to listen to what God says and then do what he says because he's, his word is clear. He's going to give us the guidance that we need. Okay, so we listen for guidance and direction, but we also listen for instruction. And you say, well, Catherine, well, what's the difference with guidance and direction and instruction? It's a little subtle difference in there. Monique, the teacher's here. Later on, we'll, we may let her give us, you know, the deep differences in guidance and direction and instruction. But here is the deal. When we talk about guidance and direction, we're talking about which, which way I should go, okay? Wh which way should I turn? Instruction is the how. Okay, so look at, look at this, y'all. Look at John verse 14, I'm sorry, chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 26. Look at what Jesus said. This is why we don't have no excuse not to listen. Okay, because Jesus in here is promising that he's going to give us some help to, for whatever we're dealing with. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, listen, y'all, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. When, when we find ourselves pulled away, when we find ourselves going every which way other than the way we should because we are so distracted by what's going on in our lives. We don't have to look far for help, ladies. The Holy Spirit, it, the Holy Spirit is not, first of all, it's not a thing. The Holy Spirit is God. Yes. But the Holy Spirit that is God lives in us yes. as believers. So we don't have to, you know, drive three, four hundred miles to find somebody to help us. We don't even have to call somebody, and if they don't answer, then we have to sit on the steps and wait and be sad because we couldn't get through. No, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And what Jesus has said is, look, I'm the, the helper whom the Father will send in my name. He's going to teach you, and he's going to bring to your remembrance the stuff that I've told you. And so we don't, we don't have to look far. Help, help, is, help is right inside of us as believers. And so what Jesus is being clear on is that the Holy Spirit is there to teach us and to help us to remind us the stuff that we read when we were clinging to his word. The Holy Spirit is going to bring that to our remembrance. So when you have been pulled away, when you are so distracted by everything that's going on and what the TV says and what the media says and what you're worried about and all the stuff that we said a couple weeks ago, we're not going to worry because Jesus told us that too. So the Holy Spirit is going to remind you, Jesus said, don't worry. All of those things, you've got to remember that you have some help. His Holy Spirit is there, but here's the key. you got to listen to what it says. When the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you, it's not um, uh, uh, something told me. It's not, oh, I don't know, I had a hunch. That's not a hunch, and it's not a something told you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you as God because the Holy Spirit lives in you because Jesus said, I'm going to send you some help, but you got to listen to the help that's come, and you've got to do what the help has told you to do. 
all right? So then finally, he says, um, so we listen, we listen to receive guidance and direction. We listen to receive instruction. And then finally, we listen to avoid danger. Psalm 91, um, verse 15. This is a psalm, another one I encourage you to read in your quiet time. We, we, we hear this one a lot. We love this one, actually. Um, psalm 91, verse 15 says, he shall call upon me, those same words we heard a few, a few minutes ago, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Yes. Listen to what it says. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So when you read this entire, if you read this entire psalm, it, you, you fool around and, and just shout yourself happy in the house all by yourself. But this entire psalm is, is about the confidence that the psalmist has in God for his protection. You read this whole, so it's, it's just beautiful, y'all. We don't have time. We get in trouble because we're going to go over time. I'm not going to read it all, but read it for yourself. I'm telling you. But, but the, the, the promise of deliverance is right here in his word. But again, we have to listen to hear when he answers. It's because here's what it says. He shall call upon me, listen, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. But again, in order for us to get that, I've got to be listening to hear that he answers me. D does that make sense? I, I can't tune him out. After I've called on him, I can't then go and still do what I want to do. I have to listen for his answer so I know what I need to do to avoid the danger and to get the deliverance that he has promised in his word that he's going to give to me if I listen. Okay. We got to listen, ladies. And then finally, uh, look at Mark chapter 13, verse 11. One more scripture. I told y'all we were just going to read a whole lot of scripture this morning. Mark 13, um, verse 11, says, but when they arrest you, this is Jesus talking to his disciples, y'all, says, but when they arrest you and deliver you up, listen to this, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak, but whatever is given you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Listen, y'all, this is Jesus telling his disciples, look at here. When they come get you, when they arrest you for preaching the gospel, because that's what he's talking about here in Mark 13. When they arrest you for preaching the gospel, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what you're going to say to try to get out of it. Don't worry about, you know, how you're going to practice your speech in front of people to try to get away. Don't, don't worry about that. Here's what I need you to do. Jesus is saying, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what to say. But when the Holy Spirit tells you what to say, you got to listen and say that. See, you, you can't get caught up in you worried about it and you don't know and it don't make sense because a lot of times what the Holy Spirit tells us to say and do in our, car, in our fleshly mind don't make sense to us. But it don't matter that it don't make sense. If the Holy Spirit told you to say it, the Holy Spirit told you to do it, that's what you do. So Jesus is saying... Look, at it, look, don't get distracted by the fact that these folks are coming to arrest you. I know they're coming. Don't, 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 don't let that distract you. I know you might be scared. I know you might be worried. But I'm telling you, don't, don't let that knock you off your track of doing what I've told you to do, which is to preach my gospel. That's what he's telling the disciples. So what he's saying to us is don't let that knock you off track from doing whatever it is I've told you to do, which starts with mirroring my life. When they come for you, don't, don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit, he says, whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. For it is the Holy It's not you that's talking. It is the Holy Spirit. So in spite of the fear, the frustration, the anger, whatever it might be, listen, listen, ladies, for God's voice instead of your own voice and say what God's voice has told you to say. Okay? So that's that's what we're going to stop, ladies, um, for today. We'll pick up on Roman numeral three uh, next week.
I pray that um, that you all were helped, that you all were blessed by this. Um, but but just 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 remember, ladies, whatever whatever you are facing, and I. I, I I know we're facing a lot. And I've been saying this the past few weeks. I know we're facing a lot. I know it's a lot going on. I know it's a lot that's trying to pull us away. It's a lot that's trying to distract our mind, our attention, our emotions. It's a lot. But late, our goal, our purpose is in the middle of all of that. God has still said that you are supposed to look like my son. So don't let any of that stuff pull you away from looking like my son. Don't let the distractions defeat you. We now know halfway, we're going to get the rest of it next week, how we can defeat those distractions. God bless you, ladies. Father, how we thank you again for this day, for this time. God, I ask that you would please, God, just be with each woman who is here in this building, for every woman who may be listening on Facebook, God, for every woman who may be listening on our conference call line, God, just, just walk with each of them, talk with them, whisper in their ear, God, and allow them, remind them of what you have said to them this morning, God, and give them what they need to listen and then respond to your word, God, reminding them to cling to your word and to listen to your word, God, no matter what comes, no matter who comes, no matter what may be going on all around us, God, because we know that our goal, our purpose is to look like your son. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.